What up, guys? Um, I want to talk about something today that um, has been bugging me quite a bit. And that's something that I've had to deal with for the last almost seven years now. If you guys don't know, my name is Trent, or formerly known on YouTube as the alias known as Cyrax. You got C Y R A and then two X's, not one, two. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I am the victim of a lot of internet crimes. I have been victimized by a lot of people, and I feel like. I feel like not enough people speak out about this kind of stuff, but it needs to be dealt with. About three and a half years ago, this guy named Music Biz Marty decided to try to make me look like a pedophile. Him and my ex, who loves to blame people for shit that they didn't do, her and him teamed up. To make me look like somebody I'm not. They had gotten a fully grown adult female to pretend to be of age. Trick me into sending a picture. And then that person then turned around. And then pretended to be underage. After sending me a picture of what I presumed was them. Ever since then. I've had a bad reputation because of these evil people. My family has been stolen from over the last few weeks. We've had benches coming up missing. We've had chairs being sold from us. We've had all kinds of stuff missing. Come up missing because of this shit. They've even at one point tried to steal my mom's car, not once, but three different times. And let me tell you something, this face that I have on me right now, this isn't the look of somebody who's on drugs. This right here is the face of somebody that has been mentally and verbally tortured for seven fucking years. That's why I look like this. Because I have been mentally and emotionally and verbally tortured by these fucking people over on YouTube. These people have shot at me. And I do mean shot at me. They actually shot a bullet through my bedroom window and tried to murder me. One of them even tried to assault me. When I confronted him. A lot of people don't know this. But I was actually at one point. On a major record label. Who was kind enough to give me a chance. Who had heard my story. Which I'll explain here in a bit. I'll explain how that came about. Um, this label decided to give me a chance. Because they heard my story. And they thought that I had something to offer. And I was more than happy to work with these guys. I had actually gotten to work. Alongside some people that I had looked up to my entire life. And I, we're not just talking like, you know, little indie artists. No, we're talking like major fucking legends in the music industry. People like Kendrick Lassane, who, if you guys don't know, is Tupac's cousin. He's the cousin of Tupac Shakur. 
who, as we all know, passed away in 96. But I had gotten to work with some of these people. But then when word got out about me being a supposed pedophile, I got dropped from the label. Ever since then, I have been fighting every day to keep my head above water. Friends of mine have lost jobs because of these people. My biological father lost his job because of these people. It's very hard for me to get a regular job because of these people. And if you guys don't know what I mean, they will... Here's an example of what they did to one of my friends. Who to this day I'm still very close to. Um, they had called my friend's work over and over and over and over again until he got fired for being friends with somebody who was a suspected pedophile. And they did the same thing to my biological father. And they have made it hard for even me to get a regular job. I try multiple times to get a regular job, but every place I go to turns me down. So what did I do? I turned to my music like I know how to do. The one thing I'm actually good at doing that I actually enjoy. But... At one point, I decided to put my music aside and give Twitch a chance because I had had a Twitch account before. I was very familiar with the site. And a good friend of mine at the time, by the name of Chris, who goes by the, by the YouTube handle and the Twitch handle, you guys might know him, by Night with the Red Panda. Nylet was a friend of mine four years beforehand. He was also enough to help me get my Twitch up and going. At first I had only 15 people that were following me at the time. He took me from 15 to 200 and something followers. And from there I worked my ass off day and night, day and night. For a month straight. Raising my total follow count up to 830 some odd people. 20 of those people were paid subscribers. And I was doing very well. I was doing very well for myself. But what happened when I started making money? These people like Music Biz Marty. William Glory Hole, CBG 2.0, who was not involved at that time. But people such as William Glory Hole and Music Biz Marty, who are two of the people that continue to harass me to this day, went in and falsely mass reported my Twitch, getting me banned. And now every time I try to make a Twitch account, or I try to make any kind of money, these people find a way to screw me over. And I'm not telling you guys this to, you know, to feel sorry for me. I'm telling you guys this so you guys understand what I've been through. Like, I'm not telling you guys this as a, oh, what was me thing. No. I'm telling you guys this because I honestly feel like something needs to be done. Because let me tell you how this has gone so far. The police have been called many a times. from my family to try to put a stop to this. The Federal Bureau of Investigations, aka the FBI, have been called many times. Nothing got done. I call up there today, I find out that these reports that me and my family have been making over the last few weeks 
have not been being put into the system by the police department. There's literal evidence on this William Glory Hole Guys channel where the police have literally walked away from my house laughing at me. When I was assaulted a few months ago by this Music Biz Marty guy, you know what happened? The police took one look at me. My nose was broke at the time. And it's been fixed now, thank God, because I had it rebroke. Which was painful as fuck. But, my nose was broken. I had two severe bruises that went from here all the way down and around up to here on both sides. But yet, the cops didn't arrest Marty at all. You know what they did? They took one look at me, didn't even go to talk to Marty, and walked away. The Akron PD system here is a joke. My mom, who is getting up there in age, she's 71 now, she ended up in the hospital. Not once, but twice. And it kills me to say this, but a couple years ago, because of all this going on, I had attempted to take my life not once, but twice. Because I didn't see a way out. I had attempted to take my own life because these people are so fucking evil and so fucking vile. That I didn't see any other way out except taking my own life. I mean, let me tell you right now, if it wasn't for my mom, let me tell you guys right now, if it was not for my mom. And my best friend, who's been like a little brother to me for over 17 years. As well as my other best friend, who's literally like my little sister. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here right now. They're the reason that I survived. These people are the reason... That I survived those two attempts. And people every day on YouTube make videos about me, mocking me, mocking my suicide attempts, mocking how I lash out in anger, wishing it would stop. The reason why I came over to kick was to try to get a fresh start. So that I can start a brand new life for myself. And build my career back up to where it once was. To where I can have fun. Make a living. Entertain you guys. Have fun. Share my life stories. Inspire you guys. And show you guys what kind of person I actually am. This person. The me that you see on YouTube. That's raged out. And is angry all the time. That's not who I really am. All those rage outs that I'm sure you guys will probably look up. Those rage outs. Were for good reason. Because I was backed into a corner by people many times. And. Let me tell you. When I was depressed. Going through all this shit.
when I was dealing with all this shit, and I still do deal with this, I still do suffer from PTSD, I do still suffer from depression, but when I was going through all this, at the peak of everything happening, I was so fucking depressed, that I ended up in the hospital. Because I wasn't eating. I was sleeping all the time. I wasn't drinking anything. I wasn't eating. I wasn't doing anything. All I did was lay there day and night. And not move. At one point it got so fucking bad. That my mom forced me. Into the car. And drove me to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, that was my turning point. That's when I realized that I needed to change shit around. Because when I was in that hospital, the doctor who I saw is actually our family physician, who is also a very good friend of the family now, who is constantly on my ass, and I thank God that he's on my ass about doing well. He gave me one month. To live. Had I not done what he said, within a month I would have been dead. Because I wasn't doing anything to take care of my body. I was so sick that my face was sunken in and I was practically skin and bone. And let me tell you, when my doctor told me that I had one month to get my shit together or my body would start shutting down, that's when I knew I had to change shit around. That's when I knew I had to get up and I had to start doing something. This happened about... I want to say in March of 2021, it was during COVID. It was like during the whole COVID thing. Or no, it was after COVID. It was like, I want to say, it wasn't March. I want to say like June or July. It was like right when COVID started hitting. But let me tell you, those first few months of me getting back to normal were the worst. Like, I'm doing well now. I'm doing very well. I'm eating good. I'm back to normal. But when I was first trying to get back to myself, I was constantly throwing up. I was constantly, you know, sweating. I was constantly, you know, my body was trying to get back to normal. And people don't think that cyberbullying, that being harassed on the internet, people don't think that that shit can fuck with you mentally. It can. And I'm a victim of that. And it fucking sucks. These people have done so much illegal shit to my family that they should be arrested. But because they are out of state, the police won't do anything. The FBI won't do anything. And every lawyer that we talk to here in Ohio basically won't take our case because there's so many different layers involved like violence, you know, assault and battery, theft. Um, these people have actually attacked my bank account at one point. I actually had a bank account with PayPal. They had attacked me on that. They had base right now my PayPal is basically frozen. I can't touch my PayPal for I think like it said like a hundred and something days, like hundred and eighty something days. Like every time I start to do well, these people drag me down. 
And if you guys are familiar with... I'm trying to think. Like, if you guys are familiar with the guy named, like, um, Chris Chan and stuff like that, those same people that went after him are the same ones that go after me. Oh, I got Cash App. Everything's settled now. I do have Cash App. I got that linked up. I actually just made a brand new PayPal and linked my current Cash App to it. So, we're rocking there. We're good there. But, these same people that started to bully Chris Chan are the same ones that started attacking me for no reason. Before... See, before all this started, before I started getting bullied and harassed and attacked and this and that and the other, I actually ran a podcast with my good friend Ian, who goes by the name of Bratley on YouTube. He's a very good artist, very talented kid. And I ran that, we ran a podcast called the Chill with the Boys podcast, where we had guys like, um... Ninja with a pencil. We had him on there. Um, we had all kinds of stuff on there, dude. We had all kinds of artists on there. Local uh, people that we had listened to. Uh, people that me and him both knew personally that are in music. Like, we had all kinds of stuff going, dude. Like, at one point, we had actually had a good friend of mine whose music I will be covering on this channel at some point. Um, his name is Vinny. He actually had, back in the day, he had a band named uh, Charmera. Which, to this day, I'm still very good friends with all the members, including Vinny. Me and Vinny still talk on a daily basis. Like, me and Vinny were still super tight-knit. You know, I still talk to him. I still talk to the rest of the former members of the band. And stuff, we're all still good friends. But we had people like that on there that we knew. Ian had to work. So he asked me if I could take over the podcast, and I said, Yeah, no problem, dude. Because I've done it before, you know. He had to go to family functions and stuff like that, and blah, 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 blah. In the past, I was like, I wasn't, you know, a stranger to running a podcast myself. Um, I've done it many times before with him and whatnot, and at one point I had actually ran a small podcast through this app called Spreaker way, way back in the day, like when Spreaker first came out in like freaking 2010. Like I had ran like a podcast with a couple of friends of mine and whatnot where we would, you know, talk about different anime series that we were watching at the time. Um, and at that time, we were, you know, that's when Naruto was, like, at the peak of its longevity. Like, Naruto was, like, right at the peak of its longevity. So, we were talking about that a lot. And just different stuff. It was a lot of fun. So, you know, we definitely had, you know, I definitely had a lot of fun with that. And I had some experience. So, I told him, yeah, I would run it. And then little did I know, that's when Music Biz Marty came into the picture. And like I said, and I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have seen this before or have heard me say this before. For those of you that do know me from YouTube or Facebook, for those of you that do know me, I apologize for the repeat of this. But for those of you that don't know, um, I don't even know how they found me. I honestly don't know. It's like one minute I'm doing music, hanging out with my friends, having fun. You know, my music had just started taking off. I had just released two uh, dubstep albums back to back that year when everything started. Like, I had just dropped two dubstep albums that year back to back and was ready to go. Oh, 
Like, I have been promoting the fuck out of it. I had just gotten done with the second album. Um, I was promoting the crap out of it when all this started. And like I said, ever since then, you know, my life's been a mess. And for those of you that don't know my life story, and why I look the way that I look, not that it matters, but I want you guys to kind of understand why I, you know, physically look the way I look, because I'm 5'3", and I'm 32, man. I'm 32 years old, man, I'm 5'3", I'm short as fuck. But, um, when I was born, I was born 1 pound 10 ounces, with one kidney and one very severely underdeveloped lung. The doctors there where I was born, because I was born in Anchorage, Alaska, coldest state in the U.S., fuck Alaska, hate the cold. Love the people, but I hate the cold. Um, the doctors had only given me a 1% chance at survival. And the reason why was because not only was I born with one pound, not only was I born one pound ten ounces with one very severely underdeveloped lung and one kidney, my head when I was born was the size of my mom's fist and my arms and legs were the size of her pinkies. I had to be put in an incubator for six months with tubes coming out of my head for six months. That's how small I was. I was very premature, dude. I was very premature. The doctors had given me a 1% chance of survival. They flat out told my mom, who, like, by birth is so... We're getting back to the main part of it here in a minute, but a little fun fact about my mom, she's not actually my mom by birth. When I was born, my biological mother could not take care of me because she had a lot wrong with her mentally, stuff that was out of her control. And she was unable to take care of me, which was not her fault. She had a lot going on with her to where she could not. And my biological father had just went to prison that day. Like, he had just went to prison like that day or that month. Or whatever. So, my grandmother adopted me, making her my mom. And the doctors had said that by her doing that, she was giving me a second chance at life. Which is how I actually ended up with my name. Which is Chance. I know, knock on wood. But the doctors had only given me 24 hours to live. They had basically told her to say, my, to say her goodbyes to me. My godmother, who was one of the nurses there in the hospital that day, was the only one out of all the doctors to actually say that I was going to make it. And let me tell you, she was right. Because after a whole lot of fucking medical shit and 32 years of being in the eyes of doctors, I'm here, bitch. What's up? <laughs> But this kind of crap that you guys see on YouTube, like if you guys look me up on YouTube, you guys can see like over time my progression. Like if you look up, um, I'll actually post the link to the channel um, in the chat for you guys so you guys can look it up. 
But if you watch my old gameplay channel that I will post the link to. I am currently drinking on Mountain Dew. I love my Mountain Dew. But, you know, if you guys go back and you guys watch my gameplay footage from that channel, you guys can see my progression over time from how I was this, you know, good dude, how I was, you know, doing well, you know, I was healthy, and then over time you can see my decline in health when all this crap with me started and what's sad is these evil fucking people get away with this shit all the time and it's fucking sickening and you know and I've said this before and I know I catch a lot of shit for this I know I do but quite frankly I don't care I have said this multiple times and I will continue to back this up. Do I agree with what Chris Chan did? No. But I do honestly feel like if these people did not provoke him. I feel like if these people did not provoke him the way they did. I can guarantee without a shred of a doubt. He would not have acted on those impulses. I guarantee fucking tea it. If he was not attacked the way he was by these people, he wouldn't have done what he did. At least not right away. And by then, he may have possibly gotten the mental help that he needed by that point. But because they did what they did to him he ended up doing what he did and ended up in prison now I did hear when that he is out I don't know if that's true or not I don't know if he actually is out or not I don't know but I will say this, I do hope that he is getting the help that he needs. I really do. I do hope and pray that that man is getting the help that he needs. You know, and that's the thing. A lot of people see... A lot of people see these videos of me on the internet and on YouTube and without knowing me they think that I'm this bad guy like I'm another Chris Chan and if you guys don't know that's basically what these guys are trying to do they're trying to make me out to be the next Chris Chan and clearly they're failing clearly they're failing at making me the next Chris Chan but I will say this, what they've done has not only affected my life, it's affected my family's lives, it's affected my friends, it's affected my social life, it's even affected my work life. And honestly, when people say that there needs to be a law against what these people do, I agree. There does need to be some sort of law and some sort of legal action taken for this kind of crap that these people do. Because what these people do is not okay. It's fucked up and it's not good.
And yes, I will admit, I have said and done shit on YouTube that I am not proud of. But at the same time, all those things that I did and said that I'm not proud of were provoked by very evil people that want to use me to make a quick buck. They want to use me to make money. And it's honestly disgusting. I've always been a firm believer that if you're going to do what me and I know like a lot of you guys on here do the same thing that I do. I know a lot of you guys are social media people as well. A lot of you guys do streaming and whatnot just like I do. So for those of you that do stream and shit and you know create content and are content creators like myself. You guys will very much understand where I'm coming from with this. And I know you guys will agree with this. I have always believed that if you're going to be a content creator or a streamer, you need to be 110% authentic and real. You know, and when I say that, I don't mean, you know, going around stealing somebody else's music and stealing somebody else's content or restreaming their stream. No. I mean creating original content that you created. You know, people like Jack Septic Guy, Markiplier. Um another one that I recently got into the last over the last year is um Iron Mouse. Who if you guys don't know Iron Mouse, she is a VTuber. Super funny, man. If you guys have not checked out Iron Mouse, definitely do it. I highly recommend it. Super fucking hilarious, dude. Super hilarious. I actually got introduced to Iron Mouse through my friend Chaos, which is not his real name, but that's his gamer tag, and I'm, you know, protecting him because of certain people. But I got introduced to Iron Mouse. Through Chaos introducing me to Aki Dearest, who then got me into her boyfriend Joey, which led me into Trash Taste, and then I ended up watching everybody on there, like uh, Sea Dog, who's Connor. And it was initially through Connor how I found Iron Mouse, and how I've now. An avid follower and watcher of her videos. Fucking love that shit. That is true, man. That is very true, Dick. That is very true, man. He really has. And, you know, and I've watched all the Chris Chan documentaries. I have. I've watched every documentary that you could watch. I really have. I've gone through every documentary and I, I feel so bad for the guy. I really do. Not going to say he didn't have his weird moments because he did. So all that shit he did was very fucking weird. Very weird. But, you know... He wasn't harming anyone. He really wasn't. He was just being himself and doing his own thing. Wasn't hurting nobody. Wasn't putting anybody in danger. So why fuck with the guy that's not doing anything? You know, why mess with a guy that's not harming anyone? You know? Why attack or bully somebody that's not causing anybody any kind of harm they're not coming over to your live streams or their videos or your videos and talking shit or being rude or doing anything that could get you in trouble you know and 
Exactly, dude. And I feel like, you know, because in school I was labeled as special needs, which I'm not. Because when I was in high school, for some stupid reason, they labeled ADHD as being special needs. Which, it's not. ADHD is that, if anything, it's helped me. If anything. ADHD has helped me be laser focused on the shit that I do. So, if anything, ADHD has helped me out more times than I can count. Not gonna lie. But, these people like to target people that are special needs. Because they know that those people with special needs can't fight back. They're less likely to fight back. They're easy to manipulate. And it's, it's fucking gross. It's sick. It's nasty and it's disgusting. But the thing that they weren't... The thing that these people were not counting on with me... Is me fighting back. Because a lot of people don't know this. But growing up I was an army brat. My dad was 82nd Airborne Division Staff Sergeant United States Army. So I had a lot of shit drilled into me as a kid. I'm not going to lie dude. I had... A lot of shit drilled into me as a kid. A lot. And one of those things that was drilled into me was it don't matter who it is. If someone's giving you shit, don't take it. Never take shit from anyone. And when I started fighting back, you know what these people started doing? They started attacking my friends, my family. I've lost several friendships because of these people. I've lost several, obviously, you know, going back earlier, you know, I've lost a lot of job opportunities. And when I was on YouTube and I was making money, Uh, when I was making money on YouTube, they had, they cost me a lot, let's just say that. Like, at one point, I had, had over a thousand subscribers. And then they did the same thing to me on YouTube that they did to me on Twitch. They, you know, mass reported me and falsely attacked me, getting that account banned. And at that point, I had lost a lot of sponsors that I had just gained. Um, I was actually at one point in talks with Monster Energy about doing a possible, keyword possible, sponsorship in the future. That went down the drain. All the ad revenue that I had made, which was pretty well off at that point, I had lost all that. Um, so yeah, I've lost a lot because of these people, dude. A lot. And trust me, how I am now, when you guys go back, and you guys are more than welcome to, you know, look up these videos that I'm telling you guys about. You guys are more than welcome to go back and, like, look these people up and see these videos and stuff. Like, and you guys will see... Like, how mentally fucked up I was at that point in time. Compared to now, like, how I am now, how I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm collected, I'm chill. This is how I am on a normal basis. This is how I am on a daily basis. When you see that version of me, when I look back at those videos, I'll be honest. I don't even recognize myself. I don't. When I look at those videos, it's hard for me to watch. It really is hard for me to watch. 
Because when I looked at those videos of myself, dude, I don't recognize myself. I don't. Every time I see those videos, I think to myself, there's no way that's me. Who is that? That's not me. But all those videos of me lashing out, saying and doing all that vulgar, nasty, fucked up shit that I had no business doing in the first place, I'll admit. But when I see myself going through that, it's like, it's like, how are you in this? Like, how did I end up here? Like, how did I end up in this situation? And I ask myself this every day. And as far as ruining friendships, these people had, you know, basically convinced the people that I was friends with at that time, who I still consider friends. They might not consider me friends, but I will always consider them a friend. Always. I will always consider those people that have left friends. Always. But these people would make it look like I did such vile shit. Like they'll make screenshots of, they'll photoshop shit to make it look like I did these things that I didn't do. And you know, I'm not going to lie. The other day, on Tuesday, was the first time since 2015 that I had time to grieve over deaths. A lot of people don't know this, but I've lost a lot of people over the years. Starting off with my older brother, who unfortunately died from lung cancer and pneumonia combined. And then later that same year, I had lost my best friend Zach to a murder in his family's pizza shop. And then over the years, I had lost, you know, several other people, like my good friend and mentor, uh, Coda, who went by the name of Coda Oda, he was a music artist. Um, he was the reason why I got as good as music as I got. Um, I also lost a lot of exes and this and that and the other to health issues. Um, and even more recently, uh, one of my best friends, Clint, who lives over in Australia, um, his wife actually just passed away a few days ago from cancer. She had been fighting terminal cancer for about six months. And it unfortunately took her life. But on Tuesday, that was the first day out of all these years that I had been attacked that I actually had time to grieve. I was sitting down relaxing, soaking, you know, relax. You guys know, like, when you're relaxing in a tub, you're soaking, you're just relaxing your body, and just letting the stress go and, you know, wash away. I sat in that tub for an hour straight, bawling my eyes out. Because that was the first time since 2015 that I've had time to actually grieve over people that I had lost. Because my mind was just constant on go, 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 fight, 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 argue, 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 attack, 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 look over your shoulder, this, that, and the other. All day long, every day. Not once had I had the chance to actually sit down and, you know, mourn these people that I had lost. That I was so close to. And 
people don't realize that when you go through what something like what I've gone through, you do deal with a lot of mental issues. Like even now, whenever I go outside to go to the store, I'm always looking at every car that passes. Always looking over my shoulder. Always looking to see, like, you know, is that guy coming, is that guy one of these goons sent by these assholes? Is this guy going to stop and try to murder me? Is this guy going to try to, you know, do harm to me? And that's the kind of crap that I deal with on a daily basis. And it's not easy. People think that, oh, you know, it's on the internet. It's, you know, it's nothing. No, that's fucking bullshit. Honestly, I feel like mental health, especially being in a situation like what I'm in, I feel like mental health needs to be taken more seriously. Because I've been on both sides of mental health. I've been on the good side of it, where I try to help somebody. And I've also been on the side where I had attempted to take my life. Where I felt like, you know, suicide was the only way out. So I've been on both sides of it, and let me tell you, being on that other side of it, being on that other side of mental health where you feel like you're alone, and you ain't got nothing, and you feel like the whole world is against you, and you feel like your only option is to take your own life, that is the worst most empty feeling in the world. Like, it is literally the worst feeling like like, there's no, like, there's no words that I could properly say to describe. You know, just how dark it actually is. Like you feel like just there's this constant void inside you. Like, like you feel like there's this constant emptiness and you constantly try to fill it and try to fill it and try to fill it and you just, you don't get nowhere. It's just constant, over and over and over and over. Until one of two things happen. You either pull yourself out of it, and you get the help that you need. Or, in a lot of cases, unfortunately, because there is no real, you know, mental health for stuff like what I've dealt with. A lot of people, unfortunately, take their own lives. Which is why, after I survived my second attempt at ending my life, that's when I decided, you know what, I need to... I need to speak up. I need to say something. I need to be the voice for people like myself who, you know, might not necessarily have that voice. And a lot of people ask me, you know, like, why do I do my music? You know, why do I always talk about this? It's because they're all subjects that revolve around mental health. I've had songs where I've talked about suicide, where I've talked about depression, 
the ups and the downs of depression where one day you're doing good and the next day or two seconds later you're just right back where you were and I honestly feel like mental health isn't taken as seriously as it should be especially with like I said when you deal with stuff like with what I deal with it's not easy It's very much a lot like what our veterans deal with going into combat. You know, they go into a combat zone for so many years and so many months. And then they come home and then they don't ever get the help that they need. Which is sad. Which is why one thing that I would very much like to do that I've actually been trying to get started is starting an organization for people that are in my situation or similar situations and providing them with the resources that they need to be able to you know not only legally fight the situation but you know get the mental health that they need you know give them a place where you know they can talk about their problems and they can explain what's going on and go about getting the proper help that they need. Because let me tell you, the police around here, they do not give a fuck. The police around here are honestly a joke. Like if you, and I'm not even joking when I say this. If you look up the Akron Police Department on the, like the whole listing thing, you know, like when you go to Google and you type in whatever, like you know, Akron PD, and then you go to their ratings, Akron PD only has a 2.0 rating, a 2.0 star rating. All the rest of them are like 3.5, 4.5, and up. Like, I'll admit, dude, Akron PD is a fucking joke. And that would be Akron, Ohio. You know, the place that gave the world bands like Black Veil Brides, that gave basketball LeBron James. You know, where Ted Old Boy Machine Gun Kelly is from. That was those guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. They fucking suck. Sorry, I'm babysitting a dog for. I've been babysitting a dog for a week, and she's she's an older dog. She's back here behind me, she's laying down. She basically took my spot that I usually crash at. Because right now my bed's not in the best condition to sleep in because it's got a whole bunch of crap on it. Plus I'm like moving shit around. So I made a pallet on the floor and she basically stole my bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. What you gonna do about it? Mm, what you gonna do about it? Oh. And here she goes. Sorry, y'all. This ain't our dog. It's a friend of the family. This dog, we're just babysitting her for a week. She's a sweet girl, though. She's a good girl. Ain't she? But, yeah. That's what we deal with, man. And it, it, it fucking sucks. I'm honestly not sure to be honest. I know she's a big old baby though, even though she's an older dog, she's a big old baby. I can tell you that right now. 
As she lays here behind me looking the floor like a fucking crackhead. I fucking love her though, she's a good dog. That's why, like, all this shit I've talked about, that's why I resonate with stuff like what I'm about to share with you guys. And a lot of people skip over this. But I really feel like... That this right here speaks so many volumes about mental health. Alright, but let's see if I can do it here. Don't know if I can or not. Now, I want you guys to watch this, because this does play a huge part in mental health. I don't know if anybody... Yeah, let me size this down a bit. When I voiced Prime for the very first time, I was living with my brother Larry. He was a Marine. diseases no different than cancer you can't see depression you can't see addiction it festers inside it metastasizes it takes over your body your mind your soul and i don't know about you but i'm tired of losing everybody i love of depression and addiction. Every single band member on the stage has dealt with those feelings, with those demons. And I miss the friends that we've lost. I miss Chester, I miss Scott, I miss Chris. And if I can be completely honest with you, a couple of months ago, I almost joined them. Addiction and depression can happen to anyone, ladies and gentlemen. No one is immune from it, no matter how beautiful their life may look from the outside, no matter how blessed they may seem. It's out of our control. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have dealt with the demons of addiction and depression yourself or know someone that has? Keep them up. Now take a look around this arena. As you can see, 
my friend, you are not alone. There we go, sorry about that guys. But the reason why I showed those videos is to show that no one is immune to depression. And unfortunately suicide is a very real thing that depression can lead to. And I can tell you what happened to my last channel. My last channel got shut down by a bunch of fucking punk bullies. Like that dude that I just banned. These guys think that. And that's the thing with these people. They think that when I do my covers or I do this or I do that. They think they could just come in and walk all over me and shut me down. And you want to know why they do it? Because they don't want to see me succeed. They don't want to see me do well. They want to sit there and watch me suffer. And that's what these people do. And when I don't give them what they want, you know what they do? They begin attacking my friends and my family. Which is sickening. But now you guys understand why I take mental health so seriously. Because they can affect anyone. No matter who it is. Depression doesn't care if you're rich, poor, whatever. It can happen to anyone. Now, I want to introduce you to somebody's music. Who, like I said before, I'm actually very good friends with this man. And let me tell you, when he released this song, dude... It helped me out so much. Allow me to introduce you guys to my friend Vinny's band, Charmera, and their song released 12 years ago. By the Is it about the No, 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 that's no. a disease. Watch for calling in. We will. All right. All right. It would have been perfect if you didn't laugh. Speak down. That is my friend Vinny's band show now. Now I do want to share with you guys one of my rock songs that I did speaking on depression. And this song I wrote a few years ago actually.
songs called Inside My Mind. And this song speaks on, you know, the ups and the downs of, you know, what it's like to, you know, wake up every day with depression, feeling depressed, not knowing what to do. I do the light corn you might like this. And this one I recorded back in four years ago, yeah. It's just basically me talking about, you know, what it's like to go through being depressed. You know, when I wrote that song, I was in a very dark time in my life during all of this crazy shit. I was in a very dark point in my life where I was so depressed, like I said, going back to when I was depressed and I was sick. I was physically sick. Like, it was just constantly, like, one day I'd feel better, next day I'd be puking my guts out. And then I would, you know, be laying in bed, reading, you know, all these different comments and stuff. And, like, some of them were good, don't get me wrong, some of them were good. But a majority of them were just, like, they were screwed up, man, like. And it made me feel like, it made me feel like I was doing something wrong. Like, I needed to change something about myself. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like, I knew in the back of my head that I didn't do anything wrong. And that I don't need to do anything to impress anyone. And that's essentially what that whole song is about. Is, you know, just going through the motions of depression. Just going up and down every day. Just, you know, trying to figure out how to get out of it. And it, it fucking sucked. Like, it genuinely sucked. Like, I don't know how else to put it other than that, except that it insanely fucking sucked. Like, going through the ups and downs of that was just... It was severely, severely messed up. And that's why, you know, I gravitate towards a lot of the darker songs. Like, if you guys have noticed, 
or haven't noticed, I'm pretty sure you guys will notice them now. But if you guys do notice now, or I know, it's all go here being a crackhead. Yeah. But like if you guys had or had not noticed, like a lot of the darker subjected songs is what I gravitate towards because I relate to that a lot more. Because I can take those darker songs and I can turn them into something to help you. And that's why I always say, and I know you guys will catch this during the streams, during my cover shows and during my regular sets where I'm doing a lot of my own music. You know, I always say this. I've said this since I started doing, you know, music streams. That you guys are never alone. Like, my goal for this platform is to build a community of like-minded people that supports each other and that is there for people, man. Like, people see me on YouTube and they think like, Oh, he's this famous guy. He's, you know, he's the guy that did street racing scene and this and that and the other. And that may be true. I definitely am that dude that did create street racing scene. I am that guy. But at the end of the day, I'm no different than you guys. You know, I wake up just like you guys do. 7 a.m., I grab a cup of coffee, hit the showers. You know, wake my ass up, grab another cup of coffee, and get ready for my day. I have my good days where, you know, I'm ramped up, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to create and do good shit. And then there's the days where I'm just like, eh, I don't feel like doing anything today. I just want to be normal, relaxed, kind of like what I did today. You know, I relaxed, hung out with my friends, gamed out all day, and just kicked it. You know, I just had fun. Like, when people see me, they think like, oh, he's this super famous guy. Nah, dude, I'm just like you guys. I have my good days and I have my bad days, just like everybody else. Just like everybody else. I have my good days and then I have my really fucking bad days that are just total shit. Some days are worse than others. And that's why, you know, I'm glad that I came over to this platform, honestly. Because with you guys, I can put my creative flow out there and do what I need to do. And I can not only entertain you guys, I can have fun doing what I do. And I get to build a community of people along with you guys. You know, we get to build a community of like-minded people that are fucking just awesome fucking people you know people think that you know celebrities are these larger than life people and dude they're regular people like me and you they are just regular people and the only difference is what they do for work that's like people think because I did street racing scene and I'm this huge name on YouTube or whatever, you know. People think that I'm like this larger than life guy, but nah, dude. I've never seen myself as a celebrity, ever. I mean, I know my name is out there. I know I got a name to myself, but I've never once seen myself as being above anyone. Because a lot of people don't realize that when I was raised as a kid, I was raised on a dairy farm. Alright, my family had very little. My dad had just retired out of the military when I was six. So I was raised on a dairy farm half my life by my mom's. My mom and dad split when I was a kid. He left and went wherever. So I was raised by my mom half my life. And the one thing I have always been taught is that if you want something, you have to work for it. 
You don't take no shortcuts. You work your ass off for it. And that is the one thing I have always stood behind. Like, people think that, like, I make all this money, but no. I don't make the money that I should be making because of these people. But you know what? That's okay. Because to me, helping someone out, helping someone get through their troubles, through their struggles, means more to me than any amount of money that you could fucking put in front of my face. You could put a million dollars in front of my face right now to give up the way that I am and to live a life of luxury or whatever. I tell you to keep that million dollars and go fuck yourself. Because I would rather have a few hundred people that actually appreciate what I do than a hundred thousand people that don't give, that just don't care. You know? And another thing that people don't get is when I was in high school, I actually took auto body shop. So I know how to work. I know how to weld. I know how to fabricate. I know how to change out engine parts, pistons, whatever. So if the economy ever collapses or shit goes dead, hell. I know how to weld, I've done scrap and metal before. I know how to work. And that's the difference between people like myself and all these other people on YouTube like Music Biz Marty that think that, you know, everything's all good. What are you going to do when the power goes down? Because one day the power grid will go down for good. And then what are you going to do? What are you, you going to do if the power goes out? How are you going to survive? People like that won't know how to survive. They'll probably end up dying from starvation or something killing them. But people like myself that know how to live off the land, we're going to be the ones to survive. Because we know how to work. We know how to live off the land. And that's what that I feel is like what's wrong with society today is so many parents aren't teaching their kids you know how to be good people and that's what's ruining a lot of these kids man that's what's doing all this shit and it's sad by these parents not disciplining their kids like they should that's how you get the people like what I deal with and it's sad it truly is sad that these people that don't get disciplined younger as kids, they turn out to be internet bullies. And that's sad. Like, you know, it's, it's crazy to me, man. Like, how are you going to raise your kid to be a shit piece of human being? Like I said, man, I'm not looking for sympathy at all, man. All I'm looking for is a little bit of help to put a stop to this shit from the proper authorities and a way to build a community of like-minded people and to try to, you know, prevent what I'm going through from happening to someone else. That's all I'm trying to do. Spread my story, spread awareness, get the help that I need and help others like myself, man, that's it. That's all I'm trying to do is help people. That's all I've ever tried to do is help anyone that I can. Well, that being said, guys, I fucking love y'all, dude. Um, 
I will link you guys really quick to my old, you know, YouTube channel where I did a lot of my gaming. And if you guys take a look at this gaming footage, you guys can hear in my voice and see in my videos, like, just how much different I was back then. Like, you guys can tell by my voice and by what I was doing. Things were just, they were different, man. They were very different. That was my very first gameplay channel. And if you guys watched through those videos, man, like, y'all can hear, you know, the difference in how I was between that and when all this garbage started. Like, you guys can really see the difference. Now, if you guys are looking to check out brand new content from me that's not on here, this is actually where I will be posting a lot of my music content on the second link that I'm going to post to you guys. This is going to be where I post all my music at. And then the second one is actually going to be my gameplay channel where I'm going to be starting to post gameplay footage over the next God knows how long. I've already got a couple uh, little shorts up right now. I do actually have a couple of short videos up. And that's all they are, is they're just shorts. One of them's like 15 seconds, and then the other one's like a minute. But I will be rebranding that channel and redoing it for gameplay for you guys. So if you guys would like to check it out, you guys can. Um, I do have Instagram, which I'll be posting at a later date. Um, I don't have a merchandise shop out yet. I am going to be working on that over the next coming weeks. Uh, right now I'm just, you know, focused on getting the channel up and going. You know, and having fun with you guys and building something that, you know, is going to be awesome. And, you know, and starting brand new and having fun. But with that being said, man, I fucking love you guys. Um, thank you guys for allowing me to, you know, put my story out there and explain what the fuck is going on. You know, and hopefully you guys, you know, in some way, if you guys would like to help put a stop to these people, these are the names that you need to look for. Like, if you guys would like to help out in any way, you guys are more than happy to. find them.
right here is the first channel that you guys can go to. Like I said, if you guys would like to, you know, help, you know, put a stop to these guys, these are the three main people that you guys are going to want to go after. Which is this one right here, which is obviously, you know, Music Biz Marty. And then... And then here is William Gorio. And then, this is the third guy right here, which, if you look on this dude's channel here, he, he does have several accounts linked to him. So you guys are more than welcome to go to the other channels that are linked to him as well. But these three people. These three people that I posted the links to. Those are the three main people that have been making my life a living hell. And this guy has been the one that's been stealing all this fourth guy. He's the one that's been basically restreaming my content and basically stealing my content. Which is this weird motherfucker? man. Yeah, I regret that. I totally regret that. But this dude right here is the one that has been, you know, like I said, taking my content and restraining it. But if you guys can help out, you know, share these channels around to your friends. Let's get these guys shut down and stopped for good. Let's put a stop to this shit that so that no one else has to go through what I went through, man. Because no one deserves that shit. No one. No one deserves to get put through the torturous hell that I've had to endure. And with your guys' help, we can put a stop to it. So if you guys would like to help, man, share this video around to your friends, your family, People that you know would like it and enjoy it and would want to get involved in putting a stop this. And like I said, if you guys, you know, can, by all means, feel free to report those four people and do what you guys can to help, man. Do your part, man. Don't leave anybody hanging, dude. With that being said, man, I love you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, you already know what to do. Um, if you guys would like to donate, my cash app is in my about me section so you guys can donate if you guys would like to um i have both a paypal and a cash app set up so i can do either one but uh, with that being said man i love you guys and again man thank you guys for allowing me to share my story and giving me a place to you know really giving me a place to start over and have fun with you guys but uh, with that being said man i fucking love you guys um, hopefully you guys are having a good night, evening, or afternoon, or wherever you guys are in the world. I love you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow, man. As I always say, stay humble, stay positive, keep being yourself. Fuck the haters, man. You guys are fucking awesome, man. I fucking love you guys, man.
I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.